triple a video games will save you and here's how in the timeline of y2k video games they just worked look at this scar now the year is 2022 and video games uh, usually when you hear triple a you think of quality i guarantee that a high budget studio's money will be put to the mouth but Let's be real, we all know that AAA is unfinished or buggy, more often than not shallow experiences, and they love the games as a service business model and the side hustle as drunk peddlers, <laughs> all in a rush to please investors for the sake of the publisher's financial safety. AAA is a mismanagement of time and effort placed into the wrong areas of their games, sometimes becoming a giant circle jerk on who has better graphics or technology. Me? Me? No, me. Some studios will put more budget into slick looking skin paws or motion capture over the focus of making a game fun. If it's not fun, why bother? Falling shot down to bugs and suffering from lackluster gameplay. YouTuber Bricky made a good video on art direction being more than graphics. With art direction, you can create life. The second video games start to look like real life, that's when it starts to lose identity. Because I don't remember anything about the campaign. I don't remember where I was. Indie games are a brewing pot of creativity, unique experiences that AAA wouldn't dare attempt because God forbid we forget the battle pass system. Obviously not every AAA game bears the negatives I pointed out and even sometimes indie games do. But when your wallet has to make a decision, your choices are all of these games for this price versus all of these games for this price. And of course, AAA comes with a big standard release price of $60, which has now had a patch update, making it out to be $70. I've got 50p. Fuck you. Usually you expect for something as expensive as gas money to work, but again, we are proven that the term AAA wields zero trust value, usually plagued with crashes, poor engine optimization, whatever the fuck that is, sometimes even having boring and uninspired gameplay, shallow promises with quietly cut content, and worst of all, the norm to release a game early with all of its issues, and to have a redemption arc when the game finally becomes just above playable. Listen, just because No Man's Sky pulled itself out of the shit should not make it industry standard. What is up with this new trend of pooping out a new game? game with promises for a better game in the future. Just give the better game at launch, hello? Also, can we make sure that the game just works in the first place anyway? Even Hello Neighbor 2, a game announced two years ago, is an incredibly short game, and at the end, they announce another chapter in the future? $40, by the way. Just say you're afraid of marketing it as early access at this point, because that's essentially what every game is. Overambitious and lengthy projects which the head directors are so excited that they want it out as soon as possible. And don't forget the independent studios. You know, the ones with asset flips, low quality trash made to quickly pump out on Steam for easy cash. AAA's issues is that the publishers have investors that want to be pleased, with deadlines that strictly have to be met. So a lot of the easier methods are at the expense of the studios or publishers' integrity that closely shatter consumer trust. The teams are huge and the spectacle is larger, therefore so much more is at risk of failure. However, smaller teams of people who have a collective idea of what small game to make, with more control and smaller responsibilities to appeal to. They don't have to play it as safe as AAA. With the hand of corporate control severed from the creators, you'll discover something more honest. You're so lucky you don't have big boobs, White! Not only that, the library of indie is in abundance to spoil yourself with. Anyway, <laughs> don't even get me started on the trends. Games after games inspire studio after studio to copy their business practices. Fortnite, a free game, needed to make money somehow. So they frequently made new skins, which are granted pretty expensive, but have gotten cheaper over the years. And these skins, well, they change most, if not all of the features of the player model. Occasionally bundling a pickaxe and four other skins with a taunt, which is, well, it's fairly reasonable. Contrary to something like Overwatch skins, which are just color palette swaps and have minimal creative inputs sunk into the design. And that battle pass model, which acts as a progression incentivizer. Also that dreaded games as a service that every YouTuber has been spewing their resentment over, <laughs> for good reason. Because when a game is free, it needs to make money. But when a $70 game is $70, The game doesn't work yet. Uh, throw it on Battle Pass. Fortnite did it. We'll just we'll just fix it later. It's okay. Warzone's free. They can live with that. And we have the same player base. So plug your ears and chat la 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 as people eventually become apathetic and accept the changes at some point. Get the fuck out of here, you yeah, pussy. No. Let's go back in time for 10 years, where you get this cool dragon skin, epic bacon and colonialism for $2 a pop. Back then, gamers were the robbers. But now you can buy a piece of red tech Saint LA for $10.
What a steal. Even in rare occasions, games will switch to a free-to-play model in order to emulate Fortnite's monetary model. If not that, they'll create an update and call it a new game. So now unlocking skins is strictly through an in-game currency that you earn with mommy's money. Or through eight months of non-stop grinding to unlock a color swap. Swapping the incentive of playing to spending. It's like how you can never be a true gamer if you only ever play on easy mode. Also, we need better abbreviations for these names. Also, somehow, the minimum amount of what you can buy never seems to match the item that's being sold. Eh, I might as well buy some more. At least loot boxes were trying to hide the greed behind an epic surprise experience. Surprise mechanics. Nothing is inherently wrong about the battle pass, but when the game is fragile, strips down progression in order to push purchasable cosmetics, it makes me question their priorities. With studios owned by publishers, owned by shareholders, their philosophy is, star first, Game second.